Okay, so for question one, we are finding all of these key features of this graph. The first one is talking about the y-intercept, and that is the point that our graph crosses the y-axis. So the point that the black line crosses the one that I am highlighting. So in this case, that happens right here at negative 2, and the way you write that as an ordered pair is 0, comma, negative 2. The next part is the asymptote, and that's the part that the graph is leveling off. So that levels off right here at negative 4. To tell us something is a growth or decay, you look from left to right. Since from left to right, it is going up, it's increasing, it's a growth. A decay would look more like this. From left to right, it would be decreasing. The domain is all of the x values, and if you see here, there's arrows going in both directions, so that would be all real numbers. And then the range, on the other hand, is I have this arrow that's going up forever and ever, but just like we talked about earlier, it's leveling off right above negative 4. So our range is actually all of the y values that are greater than negative 4. Number two is a town with a population of 5,000 grows 3% per year. We need to write an exponential function. Since it's growing, we're going to use our growth formula, which was f of x equals a times 1 plus our rate with our exponent being t for time. Remember, a is the initial amount, so 5,000. The 1 always stays. The rate needs to be written as a decimal, so 0 0.03. And then this question doesn't necessarily ask, our, ask us for time yet. That's in the next question where we plug in 10 for time. So now in your calculator, you would do 1 plus 0 0.03, raise it to the 10th power, and then multiply by 5,000. If you do that correctly, you should get about 6,719 as the approximate population after 10 years. The next one is talking about Amy's initial investment of $5,000. She loses money, so we want to use our decay formula, which is A times 1 minus R to the power of T. So she starts with 5,000. She's losing 13%. So that would be 0 0.135 for t being general time. The next one we plug in 8 for time. And now here's how this goes in your calculator. You would do 1 minus 0 0.135, raise that to the 8th power, and then multiply by 5,000. So at the end of eight years, she should have $1,567. Our next one is talking about the explicit formula for the geometric sequence. That's the one that looks like this. G of n equals g of one times r to the n minus 1 power. So in this formula, the g of 1 stands for the first term, which in this case is negative 3. The r stands for our common ratio, which would be 6 divided by negative 3, which is negative 2. And then we don't know what term they're asking for yet, so we leave it as n minus 1. So this would be our final answer for part a. For part b, we would plug that number in plug in 6 wherever we see an n and then in your calculator the way you do this is you would first simplify 6 minus 1 to make it 5 then you would do negative 2 raised to the fifth power and then multiply that by negative 3 And if you do that correctly, you should have get 96 as our sixth term. Okay, numbers 1 through 3 on here. We just need to simplify. There's no other math. Break down 108. That divides into 2 and 54.
54, you could divide it by 2, or you could do 9 and 6. 9 would be 3 and 3, and 6 would be 3 and 2. And so now we put all of those numbers back in the radical sign. 2 times 2 times 3 threes. So now we circle our pairs. 1, 2 comes to the outside. 1, 3 comes to the outside. And then we're just left with 1, 3 on the inside. Number two, we're simplifying 36 and the letters here. So the way 36 works is that breaks up into 6 and 6, which each breaks off into 3 and 2. Some of you probably already know what the square root of 36 is, but you can still do this step. So then we're left with two threes and two twos, and then we'll talk about the exponents as we go. One three comes to the outside, one two comes to the outside. I'm actually gonna erase them and move it so we have a little bit more room to talk about that. And now we talk about the X's. So if I drew out two X's, I would have one group that needs to come out. So I bring out one X to the outside with nothing left over. If I drew out three Y's, one, two, three, I see one group of two, so I bring out one Y, and I have one Y left over. So our final answer would be six X, Y, with a Y on the inside. So remember, you're kind of asking yourself, how many groups of two would you see in two? Are there any left over? How many groups of two would you see in three? Are there any left over? So let's try this last one. First, we break down 24 into 12 and 2. We have three twos and one three. So we pull one of those twos out to the outside with the negative three. And we have six left on the inside with all of those letters. So, kind of come to the side here. We have negative six. The square root of the six will stay in there. Okay, so now that we can't do anything with that six, it could break down, but it doesn't give us any pairs. Now we look at the A's. So we would think if I drew out four A's, how many groups of two would I see? And that would be two. So we pull out two A's with none left over. Now we think about the B's. Well, if I drew out two B's, I would bring out one B with none left over. And then for the third one, the C, is if I drew out three C's, I would bring out one, and I would still have one left over. So our final answer would be six, A squared, B times C, with one C on the inside, and the six. Okay, our next one is where we actually use all of the different operations here. So the first one is everything's already simplified. We just need to combine like terms. So we do negative 3 minus 2 plus 3. The number on the inside of the radical will stay the same for addition and subtraction only. So we add negative 3 minus 2, which is negative 5, plus 3 makes negative 2. The next one I don't see any like terms, which probably means we need to simplify our largest number, our 96. Doesn't matter how you simplify, you should end up getting the same thing as me, which in this case is a whole lot of twos and one three. Looks like we have one, two, three, four, five twos and one three. So we already had a negative four on the outside. We have five twos going on the inside and one three. Circle all of our pairs. Two times two times negative four times the square root of six. Now we multiply all the numbers on the outside. Four times negative four is negative 16 square root of six. And then we have to actually do the rest of the math now. So here I see that my like terms are negative 16 and negative 5, which makes negative 21 square root of 6 plus 4. Let me write that somewhere where I have a little bit more space. So our final answer would be negative 21 square root of 6 
plus 4, square root of 5. We circle it, and it is done. For number 3, that is a multiplication symbol. For multiplication, we multiply the numbers in the front to make 25, and the numbers on the inside to make 300. This is not a good answer. We need to simplify what's inside, which would be 103, 10 and 10, and both of those break off into 5 and 2. So we have 25 times the square root of 5 times 5 times 2 times 2 times 3. 1, 5 comes to the outside, and 1, 2 comes to the outside. So 250 square root of 3. The next one is where we use the distributive properties. So we would do the square root of 6 times 3 plus the square root of 6 times 5 square root of 2. So now we kind of have to think to ourselves if we can multiply things. We can only multiply things that are inside with things that are inside of the radical as well. So these 3 and the 6 can't be multiplied. We just write it like this. 3 square root of 6. Here on the other hand, I have a 6 on the inside of the radical and a 2. So we make that 12 and the 5 just stays on the outside. This is already simplified, so we'll check on this 12 right here. That does break off into 4 and 3, and 2 and 2. Circle your pairs of 2, and so we actually end up with 3 square root of 6 plus 10 square root of 3. Okay, numbers 5 and 6, we need to use our division and rationalizing rules. Because I see two things in the radical, we can actually simplify those using this kind of math. So this is going to be, there's like an imaginary one here, it'll be 1 over 5, and then we can do 75 divided by 3. 75 divided by 3. If you're dividing two things that are in the radical, there's still a radical symbol around them. So this is like one-fifth times the square root of 5. Or, sorry, the square root of 25, which is 5. And so our final answer is 5 over 5, which is 1. So there's lots of simplifying that's happening there. It gets a little crazy, but essentially what we did was divide 75 by 3, take the square root of it, and then multiply it by the original one-fifth that was here. The next one is I can't really do anything with this 12 and this 3, but we're not allowed to have the square root of 3 as a final answer, so we rationalize by multiplying the top by the square root of 3 and the bottom. The reason this is important is because now we get 12 square root of 3 on the top, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is just 3. And then finally, we're going to simplify just the numbers. We could actually do 12 over 3 and multiply whatever we get by the square root of 3 in the end. So this would be 4 times the square root of 3. And that's how we rationalize the denominator. Okay, that is it. So make sure you study this before your test on Friday.